So welcome back to another session on another uh, section concepts of classification of mechanisms. Uh, and here we will be dealing with classification detail. So in one of the previous presentation, we already saw the criteria for class biological classification, significance of classification, and what are the features which had to be uh, like known for classifying the organism scientifically. Now here we will be learning about the modern systems of classification. Uh, the present concept or the modern concept of uh, biological classification is that the classification should include not only the morphological characters but also the phylogenetic relations that is evolutionary relations between different groups as well as any other kind of uh, relationships between the uh, what you call uh, the groups we are studying okay and accordingly there are three systems of classification the phonetics uh, or the numerical taxonomy cladistics or the phylogenetic taxonomy and the phyletics or the evolutionary uh, taxonomy so each one we will be looking in detail first one is phonetics it is phonetics okay and it is otherwise known as phonetic classification or phonetic taxonomy or more commonly it is referred as numerical taxonomy it was developed by peter h a smith and uh, robert r sokol in 1963 uh, Robert Sokol was an Austrian American biostatistician and an entomologist. So, who is an entomologist? One who studies insects, isn't it? And uh, Peter H. A. Smith was a uh, microbiologist. And the Smith and Sokol both came up with a book on principles of numerical taxonomy in 1963. And that was when the numerical taxonomy uh, was introduced. But this particular method of numerical taxonomy can be traced back to 1763 to Adanson. And hence, the present day phonetics is uh, uh, referred by a few of the biologists as neo Adanson. Okay. Neo in the sense new. Okay. It was earlier in uh, 1700s, it was introduced, but it was uh, uh, formally studied and it was introduced as a system of classification why it got widely accepted through the works of Smith and Sokol. Now, what happens here? It is based upon observe the phenotypic similarities and differences. So, what it involves is there is a numerical evaluation of morphological and other observable traits and then classification based on overall similarities. This is what is done. And the whole thing classification is represented in the form of a phenogram okay, or a uh, what you call a dendrogram we call because it is somewhat like a branched uh, a tree. Okay, so, we will see in detail. Okay, so phonetics, it was based upon the overall similarities of uh, characters and uh, the graphical representation of the classification is uh, uh, through the development of phenogram or dendrogram. Okay, uh, here uh, um, the classification of organisms, it is uh, based entirely on the observable morphological characters, uh, similarities especially. Uh, we don't consider or in the numerical taxonomy, uh, the evolutionary characters or common ancestry or descendants, it is not being considered at all. So, the phonetics or the phenogram, it never reflects evolutionary relationship. Okay. Um, as already mentioned, it involves two aspects. First is what we do is we find out the uh, characters, all the characters and then we compare the species with respect to the presence or absence of each character that is what we do okay so there is a numerical evaluation of the morphological character the similarities of organisms okay and then based upon this we classify the organisms based on the similarities okay so this is how it is done now we will look into in detail how it is being done okay so what we have done is this is just an example we have taken five different species Species A, species B, species C, species D, and species E. Fine. And then uh, we have we are studying ten characters, uh, ten different uh, morphological characters in these species. Okay. What we do is for a particular character, we mark one against a particular species if the particular character is present. Okay. If a if character one is present, it will be marked as one under this particular column in this particular column. Okay. And if it is absent it will be marked as 0. So, for instance, character 1 is present in species A, species B, species C, species D as well as species E. Okay. 
over here what about species so what do you call character 10 character 10 is absent in species a absent in species d but present in species c absent again in species d and species e i hope it is clear okay then what we do so we are marking all the uh, like the presence or absence of all these morphological characters uh, in uh, the five species we are studying okay then what we do is we prepare coefficient of association or data matrix okay how do do we do it okay what we do is we just we will take a and b okay it is simply like uh, we are going to compare this uh, uh, what you call the presence or absence of characters between so what we are going to do is we are going to study the similarity between species a and species b with respect to these 10 characters what we do is we just count the number of characters shared by these two species okay so how many are there we will see so here ca the character one is shared it is found in both character two is shared by both character three is shared by both but four and five they don't share six seven and eight again they shared the characters ninth character is not being shared and tenth character is shared by the absence of the character okay so if we count we can see that one two three four five six and seven seven characters are being shared by species a and species b so number of common characters or number of characters shared by these two species it is seven out of how many characters out of ten so seven characters of out of ten characters are being shared by species a and species b fine now when we convert this into percent it means species a and species b have 70 percent similarity clear okay 7 by 10 means 70 by 100 isn't it so it becomes 70 percent so species a and species b are have a 70 percent similarity okay likewise okay 70 percent similarity now how we have done it so we have like species a and species b show 70 percent similarity that is indicated as 0.7 okay right 7 by 10 is 0.7 isn't it so it is 0.7 means 70 percent now similarly we go for b and c like a and c a and d a and d b and c b and d b, uh, b and e and with every combinations okay now then we get this kind of a table okay this a and a if we compare it is 100 percent similar obviously isn't it a and b we saw how it we got 0.7 okay likewise we have calculated the uh, the similarity between the two different species okay combinations now what we do is we have got all the numbers okay maximum is 100 percent 100 percent if we represent over here it would have been 1.0 right that is 10 out of 10 all the 10 characters are present in species a when we compare species a with species a it is 10 out of 10 so it will be 1 that means 1.0 maximum and uh, it minimum it could be 0 0.1 just one character out of 10 it can be similar okay so what happens is we are going to use this data we have got to form the what you call a phenogram i hope it is clear what we are going to do is we are going to uh, represent this data into a picture simple graph okay so this itself we can uh, in, with, with this particular table itself we can actually understand how uh, or which uh, species are more similar okay for example you can see more the maximum number it is 0.8 over here another 0.8 over here okay so b and c when we, we compared it showed 80 percent similarity right similarly d and e again it showed 80 percent similarity fine as against a and e which is just 40 percent similarity isn't it so which one is more closer or which one is more uh, closely associated right it is d and e as well as b and c they are more closely related right i hope it is clear fine while a and d a and d similarly a and e they are least connected 
okay they need in be close with uh, this may not have such a kind of close relationship fine so that is how we are going to make a phenogram first what we do is we take the maximum number that is 0.8 okay so there are two sets one is b c showing 80% uh, similarity similarly d and e showing 80% similarity so here you can see we have a scale over here ranging from 0.1 to 1 and what we have done is we have taken b and c as well as d and e first okay that is what we do now b and c has a 80% similarity so this scale represents 80% this line okay similarly d and e 80% similarity clear then we will go to the next one okay we have marked 0.8 then which is the next highest that is a 0.7 so here you can see a and b a and c it's 0.7 similarly b and d and b and e you can see b and c with a okay b with a and c here okay c with a this is this forms a cluster a group this forms another cluster because they are closely related isn't it b and c is closely related d and c, d and e is closely related so this forms one cluster this forms another cluster now what we have to check is what is the remaining species we have it is a okay now we have to check uh, which is a cluster to which a is more closely related that is we have to check the closeness of a with the two clusters and we have to get a relationship okay right we will see <coughs> we will check b with a and c with a b with a and c with a it is having 0.7 70 percent similarity then we will check d with a and e with a d with a it is 0.4 e with a is 0.4 only 40 percent similarity so obviously a is closely related with b and c okay a is closely related with this cluster with b and c so we have drawn a line to connect b and c with a instead of d and e it has been connected with b and c okay how much similarity 70 percent similarity clear okay now we have to see how much is the uh, what you call closeness of b c a with d e okay uh, we don't have an exact number so what we do is we will see a d a e connection c d c e connection b d and b e connection okay it is a d a e right b d b e and c d c e we, we can, you don't have a common number over here isn't it uniform uh, number so what we do is we take all these numbers we just find the average and the average comes to about 0.53 or so okay so we have uh, brought the connecting line to 0.53 and we have connected it okay so it is just 50 percent similarity okay and this is the line so here when you get such a kind of a picture i don't know i haven't included that if you get such a kind of picture okay we, the scale may not be given needn't be given the box needn't be given okay this picture may be given to show the closeness of the species of different species okay with each, each other so with this particular diagram alone we can say that b and c are closely related right and d and e is closely related while a is closely related with, with b and c than d and e okay and these two clusters that is a b c and d e it is related only to 50 percent clear okay so we can compare actually so this the length of each of these line it is very important with respect to phenogram this length is very important the width is not so important but the length of these lines are very important okay this indicates how much is the closeness clear okay so this is about the phenogram that uh, we were speaking about the phen phenetics which is numerical taxon okay and uh, here uh, phenetics takes into account as many comparable morphological characters as possible so instead of 10 we can have plenty and we can uh, using computer techniques you can use it to determine which groups are most com uh, like uh, close to each other and which ones are to be separated so all characters have equal weightage over here